Marhaban. My name is Ian Campbell, and this is the second in a series of videos intended to introduce you to the complicated but not necessarily difficult grammar of modern standard Arabic. This series of videos will address how to make nouns and adjectives into phrases, which requires a great deal more in Arabic than it does in English. In this third video, I'll be talking about the number of nouns, singular, dual, or plural, and how this relates to whether the noun in question denotes a human. So let's begin with the al-adad, the number of something, that is the number of people in a room, not the actual digit itself. It comes from the ein dal dal root, which is for counting things, and this is what we call a doubled root because its second and third letter are the same letter. And these crop up all the time. They're one of the easier types of non-standard roots to deal with. Sometimes the dals will collapse and have a shadda on them, and sometimes you'll get two dals, which is easy to see. So this is very common. English only has singular and plural. Long ago, English had a dual for counting two of anything but it gradually got simplified out of the language between Old English and Middle English. But Arabic has not undergone this simplification process. The formal language has not. So it's kept the dual for two of any noun. Arabic adjectives have to agree with their nouns in number as well as in gender. And in theory, this is simple, but it can be tricky with duals and plurals. And I'll go into great detail about this in a moment. But let's deal with the singular first. Mufrad is our word for singular. The fa, ra, dal root means individual. So sometimes you'll meet someone named Farid or Farida, which means unique. Once I had three Faridas in a class, which was a unique experience. Singular nouns get singular adjectives, regardless of gender. We still have to make them agree in terms of gender, but this is pretty easy to deal with for the most part. So, at-talib al-jadid. At-talib is a student, so the student here, and we've take, j taken jadid, the adjective for new, and done nothing to it except add alif lem. And I'll explain how to deal with alif lem in the next video, so just bear with it for now. So, the new student. In Arabic, we say the student, the new. Here we have a student, only this student is a woman or girl. So, taliba. In Arabic, we make this distinction, and in English, we typically do not. So, we make its adjective agree in terms of gender. Jadida. A taliba, or excuse me, taliba jadida, a new student who happens to be female. Kitab is book. Qadim is old or ancient. So, we don't do anything to qadim because kitab is masculine singular. So, kitab qadim, an old book. There's no a or an in Arabic. We just have to infer that they're there. Al ghurfa, the room. We take the adjective sagir for small and we make it feminine because ghurfa is feminine. And then we add alif lem because ghurfa has alif lem. Again, I'll talk about that in the next one. So, al ghurfa sagira, the small room. So this is pretty easy to deal with for the most part. If we're going to count objects using the number one, we're going to put the wahid in between the noun and the adjective, or after the noun, and we're going to make it agree in gender. So bait wahid kabir, one or one big house. So we have bait is masculine singular, so kabir is masculine singular. Wahid is masculine singular. This is very easy. Beit wahid kabir. One big house. In Arabic we say house one big instead of one big house. Ghurfa for room. Wahidda with te marbuta. Sagira with te marbuta. So one small room. Again we're saying room one small. So just remember to put the wahid immediately after the noun and you won't have a problem counting one of anything. So singular is quite easy. It gets more complicated with dual and with plurals. So let's deal with dual. The word for dual is muthanna. So it comes from the tha nun ya root, which is where we get ithnain for two. So this literally means something that has been tood, and that's what makes it dual. And this letter here is alif maqsura, not a ya but a disguised alif in the form of a dotless letter, yeah, 
he can only be the last letter in a word. So when we have two of anything, we don't use the number ithnain to count them, but use the endings any and any instead. In spoken Arabic, it's essentially always any, so you might want to use that as your default. This is going to change based on the grammar of the sentence. We haven't got to sentences yet, so we're not going to worry about this for right now. Adjectives use the exact same endings. So duals always rhyme, which makes them a little bit easier. So here we have Taliban, two students. You may have heard of the Taliban in Afghanistan, but that's a different language. So those are students, plural, human plural, instead, because they were seminary students before, before they became murderous misogynists. So we take Jadid, and we add the same an ending to it. So Taliban, two students, Jadidan, two new students. So the rhyme here, Taliban, Jadidan, and that makes it easy to deal with. Here we have the two new students who are female. So Taliba or at Taliba changes here. We take ta marbulta, which really means tied up ta. And we untie it here. So, atolibatan, the two students who are female. Again, English really wouldn't specify this for the most part. So then we take jadid and we do the exact same thing to it. Add the alif lem, add the ta marbulta, untie it into regular ta, put our an ending. So, atolibatan al jadidatan, the two new students who are female. Here's kitab for book, and we're going to make it al-kitaban, the two books. There's no number two here. In fact, we're not allowed to use the number two, although many of the dialects have a word that they'll use for it. Al-qadiman. So we took kitab, and we added alif lam, and we added the dual ending, and we're going to do the same thing to qadim. So the two old books is what we have here. Sometimes it will be ain, in fact, more often it will be ain than an. Uh, and again, this is going to depend upon the grammar of the sentence, so we're not going to worry about that right now. So, at-taliban al-jadidain, the two new students. Talibatain jadidatain, two new students who are female. al ghurfatain so ghurfa is room. We untie its ta marbulta before the ending. Al ghurfatain, the two rooms. So al ghurfatain asagheratain. We do the same thing to the adjective, and that makes it easier to deal with. They rhyme in the dual, which at least makes it a little simpler. However, if we add a possessive suffix to a dual noun, it's going to lose its final noon but its adjective will retain the noon. Let me show you this through examples here. So, kitab is book. Kitaban is two books. But if I put the ik suffix, the kaf, on the end of the word to make it your two books, it loses the noon. It's not kitabanek, but rather kitabak. However, the adjective will retain the noon. al qadiman so your two old books here becomes kitabak al qadiman if you said kitabanek al qadiman uh, no one would care 80 percent of people wouldn't notice and 80 percent of the remainder wouldn't care they'd just be really pleased that you'd managed to say this in such a way that people could understand it i'm trying to strike a balance here between explaining things properly and explaining things practically. And this is kind of a bell and whistle that you don't necessarily have to need to know as a first year student. An ein is an eye. So when we're going to make that her eyes, we have to say her two eyes, unless she has three, in which case you should maybe think twice about dating her. So eineha, her two eyes. 
And then because an ein is grammatically feminine, not because they're owned by a woman, we have to make the adjective grammatically feminine as well. Eineha al-kabiratein, her two big eyes. You will see this in poetry and literature all the time, so you get used to it that way. Ustad is professor, so ustadan is two professors. However, we lose our noon, and then the e suffix for my changes to eya, and this is one you'll hear all the time. So ustadeya, my two professors. If you said ustadani, everybody would get it. Don't worry about it, but it's ustadeya. And then alotifan. Latif is nice or kind. So it retains its noon here. And notice that when we put alif lem on a word that begins with lem, we need to have two lems. That's something that students often miss, so watch out for that one. Ustadeya alotifan, my two nice professors, is what we're saying here. Again, this is probably like sort of the advanced class here. Uh, you can learn it all at once, but just using the dual at all is impressive, especially at your level. So please don't worry about it. Now we'll get to plural. Jamma is our word for plural, a bit of a mouthful for a non-native speaker. So we have the jim, meme, ein root here for gathering things. So plurals are gathered together. When we have three or more of something, not two or more of something, we think of it as plural. However, and this is the most frustrating part about basic Arabic, non-human plural nouns are treated as if they were feminine singular. Only humans get to be truly plural, and I'll talk about human plurals in the final video in this series. So, bait, house, is a masculine noun. So, al bait al kabir would be the big house. But its plural, buyut, magically transforms into feminine singular. So, its adjective needs to be feminine singular. Al buyut al kabira, the big houses. So if you can remember non-human plural is feminine singular, you're one step ahead of the game. Just This is the trickiest single rule in basic Arabic. So a waraqa is a leaf or a sheet of paper is what I mean here. So waraqa is a feminine singular noun. When it becomes plural, al awraq it stays feminine singular as far as its adjectives and verbs and pronouns and everything else goes. So al awraq al kabira, the big leaves, really, I mean the big pieces of paper. Ghurfa is feminine singular to begin with. So al ghurfa as the small room. But its plural doesn't have ta marbuta, al ghuraf is its plural. But its adjective does have tamar bulta because non-human plural is treated as if it were feminine singular. So, like I said, this is the most frustrating rule of basic Arabic. So, once you can internalize it, and it will take a while, you'll learn that non-human plural is feminine singular, and you'll learn to regard objects, animals, places, ideas, as fundamentally different from humans as far as how we make them plural. I'm not going to get into human plurals in this video. That will be the subject of the final video in this series, so bear with me so I can break these apart into simpler pieces for you. You're like, what is simple about this? And I'm like, believe me, this is simpler than doing it all at once. If you're counting plurals, the number comes before the noun, not after it, like with wahed. And it agrees with the opposite gender of the singular noun. This is something you absolutely do not have to worry about as a first year student. Just put the number before the noun and remember that non-human plural is feminine singular. And you're totally doing great. You're getting an A+. Plus. You, this is like advanced Arabic here. So bait is a masculine singular noun, house. So we count houses using a feminine number, and we put tam arbulta on the adjective because non-human plural is feminine singular. So these two words have tam arbulta for different reasons. Don't worry about this. Just put the number before the plural noun. You're doing great. 
Thalathat Buyut Kebira, three big houses. Ghorfa for room is feminine singular to start with, so we use a masculine number to count it. Thanks, Arabic. And then we make its adjective feminine singular. You'll say thanks Arabic a lot as you go through this first year class because Arabic is just so much more complicated than English is. Not necessarily more difficult though. Keep that in mind. So arba gorof solera, three or four small rooms. We use a masculine number to count it. If you can just remember to put the number before the noun, you're doing great. Kitab is masculine singular, so we use a feminine number to count it. And because non-human plural is feminine singular, we put tamarbuta on its adjective. So khamset kutub qadima, five old books, is what we're going to say here. This is something that you can just practice and practice and practice, and sooner or later you'll start to internalize it. And then finally, if there are more than ten of a noun, you use the singular noun, not the plural noun. This will take you forever to internalize. It took me literal years to be able to do this without thinking about it. And you add the tenween al fat ending and sometimes an extra silent alif. Again, if you can remember to use the singular noun for more than 10, you're doing great. Don't worry about it. So ashron is 20 and then Instead of saying kutub, like you as an English speaker would think to say 20 books, you have to say 20 book, or really 20 bookly is what you're going to say here. So this tenween al fatha, this double fatha, is pronounced en, and if the noun doesn't end in tamar buta or hamza, you have to have an extra alif, a silent alif, and this is a spelling hangover from Quranic days. So, Ashrun Kitaben Kodima. If you just say Ashrun Kitab Kodima, you're doing wonderfully. Don't worry about it. If you said Ashrun Kutub, which is what you as an English speaker are going to want to say, everyone will get it. Someone will gently correct you after a while, and then they'll be like, why do we use the singular noun and have a philosophical conversation about it? Thalathun is 30. So Ghorfa is our singular noun, not Thalathun Ghorof, but Thalathun Ghorfa Ten Sogera. And we don't add the extra alif here because we don't after Tam Arbuta. So Thalathun Ghorfa Ten Sogera, 30 small rooms. We're going to use the singular noun, and that's the key thing here. Khamsun is 50. Waraka piece of paper. So we're not going to say awraq for pieces of paper. We're going to say warakatan for singular piece of paper. Most people will just say waraka, not warakatan. And then sagira, non human plural, is feminine singular. So 50 small pieces of paper here. Again, a lot of this in these last two pieces here are things you can refine as you go. If you just remember to put the number before the noun and to make non-human plural feminine singular, and even if you don't use the singular noun for numbers more than 10, people are going to understand you, and understanding you is the whole point here. Fill in the bells and whistles as you go, and for now, 